So there are seven basic portrait lighting setups. Do you know what they all are? Can you name them? Can you set them up even? If you name yes to all of those questions, fine, go back to your cat videos. If not, stick around for the sake of your photography. So getting the lighting to your portrait correct is so crucial. It's even more crucial than the actual subject you choose. So this is why we're gonna go through those seven different portrait lighting setups really quickly, give you a quick breakdown of how to do it, how it should look, and the little features you should be looking out for. And we're doing this with just one light. Let's go. So all we've done, I've just brought in a darker background so you can hopefully see the contrast between the light and the shadow. I've got Harriet from behind the camera. She's gonna act as our lovely model again, just so we can tear through each of these lighting setup. So the first setup is broad lighting. So all we need to try and do is just turn our subject so they're kind of slightly side on to the camera. So we'll bring you a little bit closer in, please, Harriet. Thank you very much. Okay, so the nearest side of her face to the camera is this far side over here. So all you wanna try and do, I may just move around if we actually slightly switch positions for a second, thank you. And having the light at a 45 degree angle, kind of pointing downwards towards her, you see that the light is falling on the left side of her face, but the right side over there is a bit more in darkness. So this is broad lighting. So it's not just all about the lighting position, but it's also about the subject position. So know that Harriet's side onto the camera, she's not straight on. So next up we have narrow lighting. So narrow lighting is completely opposite to broad lighting. So all we need to do again is bear in mind the position of our subject. So if we bring Harriet a little bit further forwards and if we turn your side on so you've got one side of your body a bit closer to the camera than another. Whereas on broad lighting we had the light over there, this time we've got it behind her. So the light is actually illuminating what is known as the narrow side of the face. So all you've got to do is bring this light again bit further backwards, 45 degree angle pointing downwards, and we've got this side of her face which is further away from the camera. This is lit up, this is a little bit darker. Now a lot of these portrait lightings, especially with a hard light, look really, really good in black and white. So I'll show you some examples throughout this as well. So setup three is Rembrandt lighting. This is inspired by the Dutch painter. Now all you've got to try and do again is keeping this light a little bit higher up which are looking to illuminate one side of Harriet's face here, but we're also looking for a little bit of light to spill over. So if you need to bring your light a little bit further forward, that's fine. If you need to adjust your subject's position a little bit more, that's fine as well. So you've got half of her face in light, half in dark, but there's this little area underneath her eye where you're looking for a triangle of light. So it forms a base just across the far side of her face and it kind of then comes downwards just towards her nose. So it's just those little signifiers just to know the difference between something like split lighting, which we'll come on to shortly, and Rembrandt lighting. So keeping that light high at an angle, but just bringing it maybe a bit further forwards, just so the light crosses to the other side of the face. So loop lighting is our next setup. And again, not too dissimilar from Rembrandt lighting, but you can bring the light a little bit further around this time. So. All we're looking for, again, is light on one side of the face, a bit more on the second side, but this time we're looking out for where the shadows fall, not so much where the light is. So it's easier to see. You've got the shadow coming underneath the side of Harriet's nose here, and there's a little bit of shadow on the far side of her cheek. Now that little gap in the middle, now you can basically cover it in shadow. You'll see it as we move, or open it up. This is called closing the loop or opening the loop. So it's up to you as to whether you want those two shadows to join up, Generally with loop lighting, it's signified by having a gap in between the two. So you can see from Rembrandt lighting, we were a bit further back and then loop lighting, we've just come a bit further around. So we've still got the light a bit higher up at that 45 degree angle. So this next setup is called split lighting. It's probably the easiest form of lighting that you can do. All you're gonna need is one light at the side of your subject's face you're looking to illuminate exactly half of it and use the ridge line of the nose to kind of create that contrast and the rest of it is completely in darkness. This is fantastic for a slightly more kind of sinister, sinister scene, if I can say the words correctly. So you've got one half in light, one half in dark, brilliant in black and white, really, really kind of simple. And it's just having that light to one side of their face. Now with the silhouette this time, we're actually looking to put the light behind your subject, not in front. So if I just bring my light and my cable a little bit further around, so this time all we're looking to do is actually have the light 
right behind our subject here. You can kind of conceal it a little bit so we just get this lovely outline, this really nice glow. You can use this in combination with a front light as well, um, if you've got multiple lights to play with. If not, you can also put a reflector on the front side here to bounce some light back towards Harriet's face. You can have the light right behind her as I say, or if not, you can bring it further towards our backdrop. So you see you get that really nice halo of blue behind her. So this kind of maybe enhances the scene a little bit more, but as you'll see the differences between bringing it right behind her head and a bit further away, there's actually quite a lot of kind of types of contrast you can play with there. But that's how to make a silhouette. So our last setup is butterfly lighting. This is really nice. This is used a lot more with females than it is with males. It's more of a beautification process in portraits. So all you gotta do with this time, the, the, this lighting setup is have the light fairly high. It is straight on towards your subject as well. So your camera obviously be very, very kind of close in here and the light is raised up high. All we're looking to try and create is one simple shadow just underneath Harriet's nose here. You've got to try and get it as fairly central and as even as you possibly can. So just adjust your light until you've got that nice and evenly. The rest of the shadows should sit underneath her chin. So if you have any subjects that are quite conscious uh, about their neck, about their chins, any areas around there, this is a lovely way of disguising it with the shadows. So remember, we've got the light kind of quite high up here and we're looking for those shadows, just one underneath the nose and just one underneath the chin. The rest of the light, the rest of the face is completely evenly illuminated. There we go, so all seven done super fast. Hope you've learned something a little bit different there or learned something new. If you have, if you've not seen one of those lighting setups before, let us know what one you quite like, what one you're gonna try out. Obviously, we do take any kind of trial photographs at the back of this video, we'd love to see them. So just tag us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, just look for iPhotography course, we're all over it. Obviously, if you're already an iPhotography student, you can stick your images in the gallery. If you're not and you wanna know a little bit more about portrait lighting, we've actually got an entire course about it. There's 18 modules from start to end about how to become a portrait photographer. If you want to do it for fun, if you want to make a business out of it, there is all the information you need. We cover camera settings, lighting setups like this with a lot more information, a lot more detail. You've got downloadable resources that you can take from it as well. Literally everything you could possibly need. It's so comprehensive. So there'll be a link in the description for that as well. But obviously if you've enjoyed this video itself, hit the subscribe button, the notification button and all the the other bits and pieces that you need to to see the next video. Until then, we'll see you soon. Bye.